Howdy y'all, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about the SS Great Eastern. And this was the largest ship of the 1800s. Now, when it was being built, it was known as Leviathan. And according to the current narrative, this is not something that we had inherited from another civilization. This is something that we constructed in 1858. Now, this vessel was 692 feet long, the longest ship ever constructed, and it would hold this record until 1899, so for over 40 years. This vessel also had a gross tonnage of almost 19,000, and this was another record that wouldn't be broken until 1901, so another over 40 years. This ship could hold over 4,000 passengers, and this was an accomplishment that was not again reached until 1913. So over 50 years, it held the record of being able to hold the most people. But those aren't even the most important aspects of this ship I want to talk about. Um, they say this ship had the largest paddle wheels ever constructed. So... That's another feature that's very revealing, and just by the look of it, it has a very old world nature. It, it, it has something about it that is just really fascinating, and I hate to use the word, but that's how I feel when I see it. I feel fascinated looking at these photographs. Now, they say the hull of this ship was all iron, at least that's what the narrative says, and besides that which was already interesting iron being a relatively new use on these types of very large vessels we also have that the hull of the ship was double skinned basically being a hull within a hull and this was a feature for protection but what i found to be super interesting was that while this feature of a double skinned hull is used today in almost all ships of this size, uh, it was not replicated again for 100 years after the construction of the SS Great Eastern. So another way to look at it would be they could not reconstruct or replicate, duplicate the features of this ship for over 100 years, even though nowadays it's known as commonplace for ships of this size, and I just found that to be a very revealing factor about this ship. Another interesting fact is that it had six masts, and those masts were named after the days of the week. So you had Monday through Saturday. However, you did not have Sunday, and they said this was a sort of nod to the Bible where he created uh, God did created the earth and then on the seventh day he rested and basically viewed over his paradise so the metaphor being that the SS Great Eastern was the paradise that they had created and these masts were labeled you know one through six Monday through Saturday but there's a lot of old world photographs associated to the quote-unquote construction of this super ship and I found them to all be very interesting there's a lot of interior paintings and photographs of the ship, and it just gives off a very old world nature, very refined and very interesting. Now, they say that Isambard Kingdom Brunel, pictured uh, the second from the right here, uh, designed this ship, and it's just remarkable to me, um, basically, that we were able to, to even create a vessel like this. And it certainly seems like we were not able to duplicate the sort of exuberance we put into this design. And it just makes me question the narrative of how and why we build a vessel like this. Because according to what they have written, and you'll see this photograph, this is said to be a storm hitting the ship. It's knocking everything down in the dining hall. You also have the steam whistle here. But what they say that this SS Great Eastern was used for mainly was laying the transatlantic telegraph line. And I had long wondered 
you know we see in a lot of the old world photographs um, telegraph lines and they seem to predate the electric lines and things of that nature but I always wondered exactly how we got these telegraphs overseas how were we able to communicate from North America to Europe and the such and they're saying this was done by a telegraph line being laid on the bottom of the ocean from Ireland to Canada and they basically say they used these steam ships to lay this wire and I just find it to be absolutely remarkable and as we're told in the current narrative the first piece of this transatlantic telegraph was laid at this castle in Ireland and that already has me asking questions because this castle was in ruins at the time yet this is where we began laying the telegraph wire just very interesting details pop up all around when discussing this now they'll say that this telegraph system was basically constructed um, in sections and they say the first rendition was from 1858 but of course according to the current narrative that only lasted for three weeks and then they say in 1865 using the SS Great Eastern they began laying the second rendition of this telegraph system and this would be the system that would be used for the next 50 years and I find it to be remarkable and then they show you photographs like this and they say this was the system that laid down this telegraph wire they show you all these complicated gears and equipment but when you dive into the narrative there isn't really a lot explained to actually show you how this was being done they'll show you the machinery but they won't really explain the process and that's what i'm confused about according to the current narrative they laid these underwater on the floor of the ocean uh, lines along what they called the telegraph plateau and i don't quite see how this would be possible if you were doing it in sections who would be dropping down or how would they connect the different sections how would they mark where they needed to be and it's just a very difficult process to understand and look at this photograph they say these are men wrapping up the cable and it certainly looks to me like some sort of ritual why would you not use steam powered machinery to wrap the cable up why would you use manpower to wrap the cable to put it onto the ship i just i don't understand that but those are the artistic depictions that are provided but i digress again it's just really interesting to me who was going down and attaching these cables and how was it possible how many times would they have to stop for fuel would this ship have enough fuel to cross the atlantic ocean while making pauses every single day to lay down this cable meanwhile if they say that this cable itself was so extremely heavy you have to wonder how heavy were over 2500 miles of this cable and how could it just sit on this boat and if it was done in sections and they did go back to land multiple times to pick up resources which they don't really say in the narrative about this and that's what i find completely kind of questionable about all this is the fact that they don't really tell you about the process of how it was done they just show you a bunch of photographs of this really big ship they say was basically built for this process they show you photographs like this of people that they say are the captain and the inventor and then they tell you basically it was done they don't show you the exact mechanisms but they say that this telegraph was laid and that it would change the world and that after this communication was possible but i just find it to be hard to digest and furthermore they say that this transatlantic cable could only send 
one message at a time. And this was only advanced in the 1870s and the 1880s when they made it up to maybe seven or eight messages at a time. So even for this process to be used and in all the old world photographs where we see telegraph lines and different things of that nature, even if you had to be wealthy to use the telegraph, does it really make sense for them to lay down this telegraph line and on this line only be able to send one message one way at a time and the message itself takes a very long time to come through while they say the ss great eastern was powered by steam it also had sails and even oars for paddling which lends me to believe this could be a reconstructed or repurposed machine. So the SS Great Eastern and the Great Telegraph Line can both be attributed to the purpose of gathering, I guess, more funding and for scientific advancement, and I do support that. It just leads a questionable narrative and a questionable sort of taste in my mouth when I try to digest all the information they give about this. So I thought I would share that with you. It's super crazy information I'd never heard talked about before. So let me know your thoughts about the SS Great Eastern, aka Leviathan, and also let me know about the transatlantic telegraph or submarine cable that was laid across the ocean floor, the entire ocean floor across the Atlantic Ocean in 1858, connecting the two continents.